Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer for Tuesday, the 26th of July. I'd like to read to you from For All the Saints concerning Anne, the mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today we remember a woman of Israel named Anne, the mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Her story first appeared in apocryphal writing called the Book of James as part of a mythical account of Mary's childhood. According to this legend, Anne was the childless wife of a man named Joachim, whose neighbors would not let him join in public worship because he had begotten no offspring in Israel. Grieved by the reproach, Joachim went into the desert to fast for forty days and forty nights, leaving Anne to deal with her own grief at home. One afternoon, she put on her bridal garments and went into her garden to walk there, and she saw a laurel tree and sat down beneath it and implored the Lord to grant her a child. God heard her prayer and sent an angel who said, Anne, Anne, the Lord has heard your prayer, and you shall conceive and bear a child, and your offspring will be spoken of in all the world. And so it came to pass that she conceived a child in her womb, and when the time was fulfilled she gave birth to a daughter and named her Mary. Anne turned her bedchamber into a sanctuary, so that nothing unclean, according to the law of Moses, might touch her child. And when Mary was three years old, her parents brought her to the temple at Jerusalem and presented her as a virgin dedicated to the Lord's service. Because of this story, the figure of Anne came to be venerated throughout the church, and even today many pilgrims are drawn to her shrine at St. Anne de Beaupre in Quebec. By her legend, she takes her place as a symbol of all childless but faithful women who, after years of prayerful longing, have at last been able to conceive and bear a child, and who have given thanks to God by seeking to protect their child as a truly sacred gift. Let us pray. Lord God, the source and goal of all creation, we bless you for your servant Anne, whose daughter Mary was the mother of our Lord. Grant us grace in our succeeding generations to honor the gift of life that young and old together may learn the love whose fruit is life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end of God's greatness. Together, there is no end of God's greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your power. Together, and shall declare your power. All your works praise you, O Lord and your faithful servants bless you, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom, and speak of your power, together, and speak of your power. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name for ever and ever, together. Let all flesh bless God's holy name for ever and ever. The Lord is glorified in the lives of the saints. O oh, come, let us worship. As we remember St. Anne, we pray Psalm 85, verses 7 to 13. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what you, Lord God, are saying. For you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who revere you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Lord, you will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before you, and peace shall be a pathway for your feet. Let us pray. God of grace, you love the world so much that you gave your only Son to be our Savior. Help us to rejoice in our salvation by showing mercy and truth, 
and by walking in the way of righteousness and peace. We ask this in his name and for his sake. Amen. Together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we leave behind the story of the conquest of the Holy Land under Joshua, and we begin the book of Judges, a little introduction from the Good News Bible. The book of Judges is composed of stories from the lawless period of Israel's history between the invasion of Canaan and the establishment of the monarchy. These stories are about the exploits of national heroes called judges, most of whom were military leaders rather than judges in the legal sense of the word. One of the better known of them was Samson, whose deeds are recorded in chapters 13 to 16. The great lesson of the book is that Israel's survival depended on loyalty to God, while disloyalty always led to disaster. But there was more than this. Even when the nation was disloyal to God and disaster came, God was always ready to save his people when they repented and returned. Our reading assigned today is chapter 2, verses 1 through 5 and 11 to 23. We skip over chapter 1, which documents more of the conquests of Judah and also the conquests of the northern tribes of Israel. Chapter 2. An angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I brought you up from Egypt, and I took you into the land which I had promised on oath to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and you, for your part, must make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You must tear down their altars. But you have not obeyed me. Look what you have done. Therefore I have resolved not to drive them out before you. They shall become your oppressors, and their gods shall be a snare for you. As the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the Israelites, the people broke into weeping. So they named that place Bochim, and they offered sacrifices there to the Lord. Verse 11. And the Israelites did what was offensive to the Lord. They worshipped the Balim and forsook the Lord, the God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They followed other gods from among the gods of the peoples around them, and bowed down to them. They provoked the Lord. They forsook the Lord, and worshipped Baal and the Ashtaroth. Then the Lord was incensed at Israel, and he handed them over to foes who plundered them. He surrendered them to their enemies on all sides, and they could no longer hold their own against their enemies. In all their campaigns the hand of the Lord was against them to their undoing, as the Lord had declared, and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they were in great distress. Then the Lord raised up chieftains, who delivered them from those who plundered them. But they did not heed their chieftains either. They went astray after other gods and bowed down to them. They were quick to turn aside from the way their fathers had followed in obedience to the commandments of the Lord. They did not do right. When the Lord raised up chieftains for them, the Lord would be with the chieftain and would save them from their enemies during the chieftain's lifetime. For the Lord would be moved to pity by their moanings because of those who oppressed and crushed them. But when the chieftain died, they would again act basely, even more than the preceding generation, following other gods, worshipping them, and bowing down to them. They omitted none of their practices and stubborn ways. Then the Lord became incensed against Israel, and he said, since that nation has transgressed the covenant that I enjoined upon their fathers and has not obeyed me, I, for my part, will no longer drive out before them any of the nations that Joshua left when he died. For it was in order to test Israel by them, to see whether or not they would faithfully walk in the ways of the Lord as their fathers had done, that the Lord had left those nations instead of driving them out at once and had not delivered them into the hands of Joshua. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we see the ongoing cycle of faithlessness 
God's mercy and provision, and then once again, faithlessness as the peoples unite themselves to the indigenous gods of the land. The scriptures declare that the, some remnant nations were left in Canaan in the promised land in order to test the people and their resolve and commitment to the Lord. I wonder if we see irritants in our own lives as opportunities of testing to grow, to be stronger, to be more patient, to be more loving, kind, and faithful. Or do we see only the challenges in our lives as circumstances to be removed? What if instead we saw the challenges of life as opportunities to grow in grace? May the Lord help us to grow in grace through the vicissitudes of life and the challenges which come day by day. Amen. Let us give thanks to God our Father always and for everything, saying, We thank you, Lord, for the beauty and wonder of creation, for all that is gracious in the lives of women and men, revealing the image of Christ, Lord, we thank you for our daily bread, for our homes, for the measure of health and freedom that we enjoy, for our families and friends, for minds to think and hearts to love. Lord, we thank you for strength and skill to work, for leisure to rest and be renewed. Lord, we thank you for those who are brave and courageous patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, Lord, we thank you. For those who are frontline workers, especially all of our health care practitioners, so many of whom are burning out and exhausted from the ongoing raging of the pandemic, Lord, for them, for your grace to assist them, we thank you. For all who pursue peace, justice, and truth. We do especially pray for peace in Ukraine and other war-torn nations. We pray for truth and reconciliation with our First Nations peoples, for your blessings upon the Pope's visit, that true and meaningful apologies will be made that will lead to greater healing. For this, Lord, we thank you. Gathering our prayers as Jesus taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now, friends, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon your faces and the rains fall gently upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you and all that you love in the hallow of his hand with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Tuesday.